If you're like me, you've been bombarded here on YouTube with ads for both Motion Array and Artlist Max. But what is the difference between these two websites? It's a little confusing, especially because they're owned by the same company. So today we're gonna dive deep and see what the difference is between Motion Array and Artlist Max and which one might be the better fit for you. If you're not familiar with either of these guys, let me catch you up. They're both subscription services where they're like one-stop shops for video creators. You can get stock music, stock video, even templates for Adobe Premiere, DaVinci, and Final Cut Pro on these sites for one fee every single month or an annual plan. I really love this business model. Not that long ago, you used to have to subscribe to so many different sites to get, let's say, your stock video over here, your stock music over there. I love this idea that everything is just all in one place. But there are some differences between these two platforms, and I'm going to show you what the differences are. Let's just start with pricing because I know this is where you're really interested. Here for Motion Array, you can subscribe for $29.99 a month, or if you commit to an annual plan, it's $19.99 a month. And then if you have a team, like two people working on the same account that you share, it's $37.50 a month. And as you can see from these charts, they all include all of the same stuff. This pricing structure on Artlist Max is a little bit different. Let me show you. The biggest differences are between Max Social and Max Pro. Max Social is $29.99 a month if you go for the annual plan, but it's $60 a month if you're billed monthly. You'll see down here that the footage resolution only goes up to HD, and they do have a video and image editing app but those apps don't have all the features that are included in the Max Pro version. You'll notice the Max Pro version can only be billed annually. You cannot do a monthly subscription on Max Pro. The total for the year is about $480, but you do get footage up to 8K, and the video editing app does include some really great plugins from the company Boris. Boris FX makes great plugins, especially for like motion tracking and stuff like that. So there's more bells and whistles at the pro version for sure. After that, there's a Teams plan that is also billed annually if you've got two people working on the same account, and then they will tailor make a enterprise version if you're in a bigger organization. So now that we understand the pricing, let's see what makes these two websites similar, but also different. In general, I would say Motion Array's reputation is that its strengths lie in like the title templates, effects, and transitions that you can download for your editing software. Whereas historically, Artlist has been known for its great stock music library and its really impressive stock footage library, really cinematic shots, beautiful video. I've been a big fan of Artlist's stock footage for a very long time. Let's start there and compare the footage between Motion Array and Artlist Max. So here we are on Artlist Max under their footage tab. Let's just search for a driving car. And here are so many options from Artlist. You'll notice that as I scroll down, Artlist just keeps surfacing more and more options to me. It's not really through like pages. Let's head on over to Motion Array and search the same search term. You'll see on Motion Array, when you get to the bottom of the page, you have to advance to the next page, which is nice because it kind of gives me an idea of how many clips fit this search query on Motion Array, whereas Artlist is really hard to know how many clips are in there. They don't really tell you, and the page just keeps loading and loading and loading and loading, so it's really hard to count. Let's go back to the first page of search results on Motion Array, and let's draw our attention to this middle shot here, Blue Highway Tunnel at Night. I'm going to copy the title of that clip and I'm going to head back over to Artlist and let's see if there's overlap between these shots since they are owned by the same company. And there does seem to be some overlap here. You can see this first clip almost looks exactly like the same shot here on Motion Array. Let's clear this out and try again. I'm gonna copy the title of this clip here on Motion Array and let's head back over to Artlist. So I'm not right away seeing the exact same shot for Motionary, but there are so many results here. It just keeps going and going and going. There are so many options on Artlist, and these are beautiful shots. This is what I meant when I said that Artlist is really renowned for its high quality stock video. 
What if we search that same term on motion array? Look, there's only a couple of shots here, but I do feel like we did see this shot on Artlist, so there is some overlap. So I think if you're looking for really high quality stock footage, Artlist Max is definitely going to be more your speed. One edge that Motion Array does have over Artlist Max is its images category which includes stock photos as well as packs of graphics, which I love. You can download an entire pack of vector graphics and really create a very cohesive, specific design with these graphic packages. But let's not stop there. Let's look at some other things as well. Here on Motion Array, let's select audio. And here is a cut of music, Step Toward Your Dream. Let's see if this cut is also available on Artlist. I'm going to head on over to music and then use the search bar to see if we can find that exact song. And nope, that same song is not available on Artlist. Let's try it the other way. I'm going to select this title here, Teenage Dream, and let's search on Motion Array. Nope. So Artlist and Motion Array do seem to have different music cuts. They're not the same exact music cuts. Let me try to get a sense of how many different cuts there are on each of these platforms. I'm going to select corporate here and let's see how many results we get. Okay, so I counted 59 cuts of music on this one page and there are 355 pages. So that's almost 21,000 music cuts on Motion Array that fit the corporate category. Let's see if we can figure out how many there are on Artlist. Just like with the stock footage results on Artlist, these tracks just keep populating and really there's no way for me to know how many songs fall under the corporate category here on Artlist Max. But I think there's a lot. Like I said, Artlist started as a stock music site, so I have to believe that the number of music cuts in Artlist Max either matches or surpasses Emotion Array. So you do get a ton of music cuts here on Artlist Max. Now let's look under the templates category because this is where Emotion Array really shines. I'm going to look at Final Cut Pro templates because that is the editing app that I use for my videos, but also, as I said before, they have Adobe, After Effects, and Premiere Pro templates, as well as motion graphics for all platforms, Adobe Premiere Rush, which is Adobe's iPad app, and DaVinci Resolve. Here on Motion Array, I am going to select Transitions, and let's see how many transitions they have for Final Cut Pro. Okay, I counted... 60 different transitions on this one page and there are eight pages so almost 500 different transition packs for Final Cut Pro on Motion Array. Let's hop on over to Artlist. Let's go to Templates. They're arranged a little bit differently. Under Technical I'm going to select Final Cut Pro and under Categories let's select Transitions and I'm just going to scroll down. They're going to keep loading. And actually I did, I hit the bottom here. So there's clearly not 500 transitions here on Artlist, but you know what I've noticed? The same transitions, effects, and title templates are on both of these platforms. Motion Array just has more of them, which makes sense because that's typically what people think of when they think of Motion Array. All right, let's look at some of the other bells and whistles that are unique to each platform. Motion Array has this video collaboration tool that allows you to upload videos to your Motion Array account and then clients or other collaborators can go in and can make comments and notes on that video frame by frame. This is a great tool. You see this on other platforms like Vimeo, but I do like that it's built in to the Motion Array subscription. It really is more becoming that one-stop shop for video creators and this is definitely part of it. It also has a portfolio builder that lets you create a professional portfolio website in minutes. I definitely don't think this replaces like a traditional website, but it is nice to have a quick gallery of your work if you're trying to get new clients. And it also has integrations for Adobe users so you can import these templates and other elements right into your Adobe projects, which is also really cool. I wish they had this for Final Cut Pro. Artlist, on the other hand, has its own editing app called HitFilm. So if you're looking for a new editing app, if you're not interested in Premiere, Da Vinci or Final Cut Pro, you may be interested in this. And this comes with your 
Artlist Max subscription. But if you want the really cool features from Boris, like the motion tracking, you will definitely need to be on the Max Pro version of Artlist Max. So between these two platforms, which one is right for you? I think it just depends on what you're looking for. Clearly, Motion Array is full of fun titles, templates, and effects transitions for Final Cut, Premiere, or DaVinci users. So if you're looking for that kind of element, I do think you're going to prefer Motion Array, or if you're really interested in those graphic packages or still photos as well, I do think you're going to prefer Motion Array. If your pain point is really that you need very, very high quality stock video footage, I think you're going to prefer Artlist Max, as well as if you're looking for more music cuts, I do think you're going to prefer Artlist Max. And if you're looking for a new editing platform, maybe you don't like Premiere, Final Cut, or DaVinci, perhaps you will like that HitFilm editing app from Artlist Max as well. It's kind of hard to tell where the future of both of these subscriptions are going because they are owned by the same company. They both rely on collaborators, outside collaborators, to supply the stock footage or these templates and effects on each of these platforms. And I do wonder if over time, more collaborators will be signing up to work with Artlist Max, and maybe because Artlist Max is so new, they don't have as many effects and titles uh, right now, but maybe more is coming. So that is something to watch. I reached out to Artlist to see what the difference was between these two platforms as they saw it, and I didn't hear back from them. So we're a little bit left guessing, but you can browse both of these websites and all of the content in them without even signing up. So I will link to them down below so you can take a closer look for yourself. If you guys wanna see an entire review or tutorial about that HitFilm editing app from Artlist Max, let me know down in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing that. I did pick out some other videos though in the meantime that I think you're gonna like, and I'll see you again.